This is Matt Cohen, Matt Cohen Photo Workshops. This is the third in a series of critiques from the Marysville Flying U workshops. Um, again, we ran out of time. <laughs> I'll just let everybody shoot. And we didn't have any time for critiques. So because I believe that that's an important part of all of this, I'm going to do them via video. And again, this is the third in the series, and these pictures are by Steven Simonowski. I'm just guessing on that one. Um, anyway, Steven selected these before uh, I decided to do them like this. So instead of importing them into my software and kind of going side by side, we're just going to go through his gallery on smug mug um, we're not going to look at every single picture but i'm going to pull ones that i think are representative and we'll go from there so in general I've said this before i think on one of the other videos and i'll probably continue to say it over and over again when you're out there shooting you want to provide a point of view that's different than what people are used to seeing as they're walking around as they're watching on TV, as they're even looking from at pictures from other photographers. You want to show them a different perspective. When you watch sports on TV, everything is at either eye level or overhead. And that's why looking at pictures that were shot from the stands looks really boring because it just looks like a frame from a video, from a, a broadcast game. And that's why looking at pictures where you're standing up at other people standing up you know, with like a mid-level uh, or a mid-range telephoto lens, it's going to look really boring. Like this is what you see as you're walking from the parking lot to the the bull riding arena. It just looks like this. How do you fix that? Get higher, get lower, shoot with a wider lens, get further away and shoot with a longer lens. But just this, it's a very pedestrian kind of look. It's just nothing special. It's just what everybody's used to seeing and the whole point of you getting better at photography is showing people how you see things in a different way than they see things like you take the access that you get being on the ranch and then you couple that with how you see the world and how you see the things in front of you and that's your vision that's why you're asking people to look at your pictures versus other people's pictures so you need to give them something that they're not already seeing and when I kind of page through these pictures, um, you know, what we're seeing is just, again, eye level people standing up, eye level people standing up. So, you know, could this picture have been something? Yeah, you know, there's interesting light and this guy's, uh, you know, all dressed up and he's got his sticker on his hat. You know, if you're going to do a pose portrait, you're going to have him holding a water bottle. No, I would want him to put that down. Um, it just doesn't fit I'm just kind of distracting and isn't super cowboy to be you know drinking out of bottle bottle water but you know again this is mid range lens and standing and standing so you know these pictures would have been much better if you had been wider and lower or just lower in general um, you know look for a cleaner background than this like the sky is a better background than you know the highway back here so you know, those are things to think about. Again, you know, if you look at th these pictures, like there's not any difference in any of these pictures from something that somebody walking around with a camera phone could have done, right? The These are just, you just have the camera in front of your face and you're just looking around and you're fitting something in the frame and then you're pressing the button. And what I would want to see is, I don't want to see all these things from the same point of view. Like these little kids... Like, this is better because you got a little bit lower, but I would want, you know, even lower still. Like, I want to be looking up at this. Like, I want to see him really big in the frame. I don't want to see these people walking behind him. I want to see Hayes' face really big, like, looking up like this. Like So you need to get lower to make this more interesting. But you can tell how just the little bit lower that you got for this is better than, you know, where you are here. Right. So this, because you got a little bit lower and a little bit closer here is just a more interesting picture. Like neither of these are very good, 
but this you would rather look at this picture than this picture I think pretty clearly um, so everything that we're looking at here is suffering from um, you know just being caught in the middle too middle of a lens and too middle of a viewpoint and not enough um, exploring the extremes looking for where there's interesting light looking to isolate things like these are all just you know these are camera phone pictures like if you were walking around with your camera phone this is what you get right um so this is better you know like he's coming at you you waited for him to get way closer but here's the problem you know i'm looking at this and i'm looking at could could you have been lower than this and that's where i you know i would have wanted to have been down here like you really want to be low if you're trying to go for the extreme like this is better because you're clearly lower than his eye level so that's a good start but you want to be even lower than that what's going to happen when you're trying to shoot somebody who's walking towards you they're naturally going to walk by you because they think oh well i don't want to walk right into him whereas you're looking at him like yeah yeah get closer to me right so can you communicate to them like yeah just continue walking to me it's no problem yeah i would do that let them get as close to you as possible so that you don't have this like kind of weird awkward thing where you cut him off at the ankles and he's going by you a little bit like you want him straight up walking right towards you it's difficult to do that on the fly but the way this is like his his saddle over his shoulder like this and like that kind of hesitating look on his face and the sticker on here like all of this stuff would have worked you want to work yourself into it a little bit more like your point of view so you want to get you know again lower try to get the truck out of the background and then communicate with him to you know keep going and not you know break off in that awkward kind of way this is better than the ones on the other on the other page um, again you know these are uh, again middle and middle you're, you're not low enough and you don't have a wide enough lens you don't have a long enough lens um, really like so you're looking at this picture this is where the picture is this connection between their faces and then whatever he's doing with the end of the bull rope here. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. All of this stuff. Completely irrelevant. The picture is right here. So what do you do? You know, you either get very close to them and shoot with a wide angle lens. Or you get further away and try to minimize the distance between them. But you have to think of where is the picture. This is the frame. This is what you're looking at here. But where's the picture? If the picture isn't all of the frame, then you composed it wrong. This is where it is. Um, silhouettes. So there's probably... So if you see here how you lose his face because there wasn't enough of a profile. And if you look at this one, like there's more of a profile. So obviously this is a better picture than this, right? Is this enough? Is this interesting enough? No, it's not he's not doing anything like you would really want you know to see a hand you want to see him like mimicking an actual bull ride or something like that um so somebody sitting on something is going to be probably less interesting than somebody riding something and doing something so you want to look for those moments like just sitting it has there has to be a really cool profile or it has to be somebody who's really famous because they have like a distinct profile or something like that for it to be interesting and you just really don't have that here but again like when you're looking at the pictures like this is a profile way more than this is a profile so you would know yeah let's get rid of this um you know again like this is kind of a cool moment like you have like this look on his face like this is scary right these kids are doing something that's definitely very dangerous like we were all there we saw the 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 level of the bulls and these guys are getting on some of them for the first time like you want to explore this this is where the picture is this is parking lot this is a water tank you know this is a loading chute like these all these things are not relevant to your picture at all and really this all of this is not relevant this is where the picture is happening so you need to figure out either how to get closer again or um, the same distance with a much longer lens just to get that look because that's what you're looking for but there's nothing else in here that's interesting so you really need to concentrate on what is um, you know there's not really any thought here at all like to the distances between them and to what's in focus and what's not in focus so this is kind of a mess this is better 
I like how the light is here. Like you use the light in an interesting way because the light is hitting the subject, but it's not hitting the background. So that's good. And then the focus is good and like how he's looking down is good. Um, I would still rather this was wider and that you were closer to it to make it kind of more dramatic than it is. This is still, you know, approaching the level of eye level and normal kind of vision. And again, you want to try to explore, you know, how you can make this look different. And, and one of those ways is with the wider lens and getting closer to it. Um, you know, this is okay. The problem is that it's focused here on the dummy and you would really either want it to be focused on his face or I guess if you were way closer and lower, you could kind of make him out of focus and have the focus be on his boots, which are kind of cool because they're worn here. So again, this is an angle where you're just at eye level and you would want to be lower kind of like shooting up or just get closer and shoot like this. Um, this is kind of, again, like a very pedestrian angle. This is pretty good. Um, I'm not wild about how you're kind of behind them, but I know that there really wasn't the space where you would want to be beside, but that's where you would want to be. You would want to be shooting directly into here instead of at this angle like this. But it, you know, it's a good, it's a good impulse. Like you have the pro here who's watching and then you have these little kids who are, who are smaller and, you know, obviously the body language is all different. So this was a good impulse, even if the picture didn't work out in the end. This is good. I like this. Um, I would prefer that you kind of composed around this blue tarp and these things over here. So when you're shooting like this, like you have, um, you know, choices of where to be. And I would try to, um, I don't know, be lower so that, you know, this was out of the frame and there was more blue sky in the background. In general, this is good though. This is like, um, this is a good impulse. Again, this will come like pursue this kind of thing where you're isolating it and, but you want to be just more careful about the angle, the height that you are from side to side, up and down what your background is, and then try to keep things that are less pleasant looking like blue tarp out of the background. Um, yeah, this is okay. Uh, I guess really I would want it to be cropped here and cropped here. If you're going to do that, if you're not going to have the horse in it, then really, then the picture just becomes the rider and then you don't want all the rest of this. Um, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Again, you know, the, the way the light is coming in helps and then it's not on the background. See so this really clean background. Um, I'm not wild about the angle. Again, it's still pretty head on, but this is a better moment than those other pictures. So you can forgive the angle a little bit. Um, yeah, these are okay. This is not, you know, like these pictures are kind of ones that you would want to say for when you had really great light or when it was on like a, you know, like a more traditional looking kind of ranch with maybe wooden panels in the background or barbed wire or something like that. Like these, these pictures you want it to be kind of more of a classic thing unless there was really something dramatic going on, but these are okay for what they are. Uh, okay. So these pictures, when you are this far away, again, we talked about this a lot at the school, like you're at a really awkward angle here, like high, up shooting down and there's almost no space in between what you're shooting in the background so all of this stuff kind of just becomes a blob right there's no separation between any of these kind of things because you can't there's not enough space for there to be any separation so when you're shooting and the action goes this far away there's not really anything that you're going to be able to do the picture is just going to look all the same it's going to look flat there's not going to be any kind of depth to it or any kind of, it's not going to feel 3d at all. It's just all going to be the same kind of depth. So that's why you want to get into situations where you have a reasonably high chance at getting something that's closer to you than it is to the background with a cleaner background. So you can either, you know, blur it out or there's nothing there in the first place, in which case it's just going to be clean. And that's kind of what you're looking for. So when you're shooting like this, you're just going to have to know that unless something really crazy, like in, it, the bull was bucking at the height of the fence or something like that, 
these pictures are, are they're not going to look really all that good at all uh, this is fine uh, just a good detail picture um, you know the, co the composition is a little bit awkward because you cut it off here so you would either really want to leave all of that in leave the boot all the way in and then compose it horizontally or if you're going to compose it vertically then maybe you know just how much of this do you need right so if you just cropped it to here and then you know down to where the heel was or something like that would that would that be enough yeah i would i would think that there's enough detail there you would know what's going on and then like an extra four or five inches of denim doesn't really help or do anything to make the picture more interesting so think about where your picture is to me this is where the picture is and then you need a little bit extra for context you know you need the the cinches and the the leather and the um, enough of the boot to know that it's a boot and part of the jean but you don't need all of this um, you know, again, all of the action is happening way too far away. And so then you just have the backs of these two. So these pictures, they're just not going to be interesting because everything that's happening is happening from the other side. If you were over here shooting back, this would probably be more interesting, but you weren't. So you just have to understand on that ride, it didn't come to you and, you know, you just chalk it up to bad luck and you move on to the ride where something did happen and come at you like this. Um, you know, it's nice to have a picture like this. It's not particularly hard to get. It's not particularly interesting, but, you know, it's pretty close to you. So hang on to that. Um, you know, this is good. This is what you're looking for in the um, in the bull riding. This bull is definitely bucking and kicking. The rider is definitely staying on. The problem with this is, is gear limitations, and you just didn't have enough lens to blur out the background. So you just want to, you know, you want to think about that. Like if, if this is the gear that you have, then shooting in this from this you, the bull is never going to get far enough away from the shoots for you to have separation if this is where you are so then maybe you want to be closer so that um you know the action that's happening here the background is going to be further away but you know these are limitations that everybody has to shoot around depending on what kind of gear they have okay so you know we talked about this in the other videos also like it's good to be able to do this but this bull isn't doing anything particularly photogenic or athletic and the rider's kind of just staying on so once you've seen one of these you've seen them all so you just you know kind of move on to something else um this one i don't think is is in focus you want to be you want to be careful that the pictures that you're saving like you would want to be able to read what these said right I, I don't i think that this is probably more in focus i think the focus probably just went all the way to the back this is not in focus so you don't want to you don't want to say ever show pictures like that um so this is fine this you know it's probably not a great angle and you would want the dog to be closer and then this is closer but the the bull is going away at that point um, I could see what you're going for here, like the pattern of the bars and everything, but it's just not very interesting because there's no, there's no point of interest. There's nothing that holds you like everywhere you try to look, it's like, okay, well, this is part of a guy, but then I don't get to see his head and I don't get to see enough of this. The logo is obscured here. And then this cowboy is lost to the sky. So, you know, would it be better if there was a bull in this shoot and you could focus on the bull and then have all this other stuff be out of focus? Yeah, that would probably look pretty cool. I would try that the next time. Uh, just not a great angle. What would work? So you see how all these guys are lined up. And so you either have half of the picture with them lined up and then half of them with this. Or you get down here and you shoot up, in which case all these guys are filling the frame from left to right. That's what I would do. You want to be down here shooting up this way. This is a little bit more what we were talking about on this picture. Um, you know, I could have even had you pull back further. So you were shooting through, you know, more bars. Uh, you're looking at this and you're really, you got as close as you could and you, you know, this is all you had. Like you were just shooting through one. But if you had kept the focus here and backed up, you know, maybe to get three or four of these in here, I think that would have looked cool. But I think this is probably the strongest picture that we've seen so far. It's definitely your most creative. You use the limitations that you had 
to make an interesting picture, right? You couldn't get any closer than this. This gave you the best clear shot of this and you worked, you know, you worked it out so all of this other stuff was out of focus. So this is good. This is the first time that I've seen you put your stamp on a picture, right? What makes you you, this does that. So that's good. Um, you know, this is very good also. Like I like how crisp all of this stuff is, like the angle that you chose got a lot of these things in focus. Like you can definitely almost feel the texture of all these different things like this fiber nylon fiber here and then this rubber material leather the rope like you know looking at this picture you can almost feel all of that so that's really good um these two definitely definitely um a moment of inspiration there so that's good definitely recognize when you're in that zone and you want to shoot a lot like you want to see it from a lot of different angles walk around you know, recompose, reframe, change lenses if you can, but you were clearly clicking here. So try to remember what it felt like to do that and do that again. Um, you know, again, this is just too far away and the action is moving too far away from you. So while it's good that you were able to catch the action, it's just not visually pleasing because it's just all, again, the subject is too close to the background and you, you're too far away from all of it. This is okay, um, you know, just not that interesting of an angle, not that interesting of a ride, um, you know, but again, as you work on your timing and if you are able to track a ride from beginning to end, you'll have more opportunities to do that. Um, yeah, this is better. Like there's definitely something more interesting happening here. So it's more forgivable, like this picture versus this, like it's, uh, you know it's the action has moved closer to you right because the horse is coming down the pen and then him coming out of his saddle like this and the fringe going and the and the the bronc rein and then the kick so all of these things are working in this picture where they're not working here like the fringe isn't doing anything cool the horse isn't kicking the bronc rein isn't doing anything great and he's further away so all of the things that are working here aren't working here right so be able to recognize those um you know not that interesting from the bronc and he, it's all very far away and he's facing away from you so nothing is helping you there this is fine uh yeah this is okay too um you know, again, because you don't have that separation, you really want to look for, a, you know, a good bucking shot. And that's not really what this is. But, you know, it's fine for what it is. And it's fine for as you're learning, you know, as you're learning to track things and keep it in focus. That's a good example of that. And, you know, this is better. Again, it's further away and there's more action happening certainly here. Um, yeah, this is, you know, again, facing away, facing away. It's just unlucky you were on it if if he had come off you know if the horse had been coming this way and he had come off over here you would have been on it so you know i'll take that as a win you just got a little bit unlucky here um this is good good timing on this um you know just for example i blew this picture i was standing pretty close to you i guess when this was happening and i was focused on the middle of the frame as he was coming off, my focus went all the way to the back. So it's good that you were able to maintain focus through all this. What's the problem? It's the same problem with all the other ones. It just, the action went away from you and it just ended up being too far. So, but you were on it. So that's something to build on for sure. Uh, this is good. Again, feel, you can see how you can feel this picture more because it's closer because you get the individual grains of sand coming up it's all just closer to you so even though this horse isn't really doing what you would want it to do the picture is better because it's closer to you um yeah this is good like this is legitimately good picture what would i have done to this i would have adjusted it so that the horizon was going across like you can see how this slopes down you would want you know just just bring this side of it up just make this pole straight and then crop it down to where the picture is again uh corner here and corner here and then just here like you just don't need all this extra dirt 
don't need all this extra sky you don't need all of this um you know just make it straight and break it down to to the essence of it um yeah this is fun it's a good way to solve the problem of not being able to isolate the depth of field all that much you come around to the side and then the only thing that you have in the background are more gates and these guys like i like this picture it would be better if the bull had jumped straight up but for what it is uh you did your part um so yeah that's that's a legitimate picture um okay so yeah again you know this kind of reverts back to the ones we were looking at in the beginning where it's medium everything's medium um you know this could have been a cool picture um again but if you were wider and closer too far action going away like it's just you just get unlucky and you need to when the ones come towards you you need to nail them and when they go away you need to know that's it you know I, you don't need to i'm not saying you need to stop shooting but definitely you know keep it in mind as the ride's going on like there's going to be times where it's happening towards you and times where it's happening away and the less time you you waste shooting when something's going away from you the less you know you're going to have to edit later on and for me that's uh it's always motivating when i know i don't have a lot of crap that i have to kind of sort through so when something's happening far away and it's facing away from you you can either not shoot it or you just at that point know i'm gonna have to delete those later on or at least not show them to anybody you know again if this had been happening you know if you had been on the other side of this it would have been great you know like the bull's doing something reasonably athletic and the guy's um you know completely off of the bull and and still pretty high up in the air like that would have been fine it's just unlucky that it happened the other way uh so these are okay timing wise the focus is blown so the fence is more in focus than they are and these are also too dark um so you know it looks like the proper exposure is on the dirt but you have like the bull and the the skin tone and the black on here all of this is way too dark um, and again not in focus so what looks to be in focus is this part of the bull this is not this is not in focus so you want to be really careful again look at your own pictures really carefully like it could look great on the back of the camera but you know once you either zoom into it or you look at it on your computer it might not look as good i think that's what's happening here like these are just you know this stuff happens fast and it, it can happen faster than your gear can keep up with but then you have to learn how to shoot so that you're getting more stuff in focus like put yourself in the best position to to not get blocked and so when you have a bullfighter running around a bull they're going to take turns being like in this one the bullfighter is closest to me and in this one the bull is closest to me and you know as that's happening it can be very difficult for the camera to keep up with it but you know again if the camera can't keep up with it then you need to be better at editing which ones you show because trust me both of these are out of focus um again this one coming off the other side like if there's if there's one thing that you need to work on like you need to shoot as much as you can as you know as often as you can but think about really looking at what's happening in the pictures like just because there's one thing that's working like this bull being on two feet it's not enough to carry all this empty space all this all this all this plus the bull rider mostly being obscured by the bull because he's coming off the other side he's already on the ground so it's really not even that exciting even if you had been on this other side but you have to be able to recognize this is not going to be the most interesting thing that you can do and then you need to move on to giving yourself a chance to get things that are more interesting um, this is better like you can definitely tell this is more in focus but those moments were better right so this moment is way way better because he's facing you and he's at a full sprint right this one he's facing away and he's not running as fast but again like look at how the exposure is, is better and look at how the focus is better here so you want to kind of combine what you were doing here with what you're doing here to get a better version of this picture all right um that is it for steven's critique for now um i hope you guys found this valuable um and we will do it again with the next student thank you